Let's Talk Serious. It is I, Jack Wallen, with my partner in crime, Swapno. Swapno Hello, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I just came back from two back-to-back -back events, Open Source Leadership Summit and uh, Open IoT Summit, and I'm tired, so I'm not going to the next week's uh, Open Networking Summit, it's too much. I bet you it was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I did like, how much? At Open Networking Summit, I did like 21 interviews, video interviews. <laughs> and uh, at Open IoT Summit, initially I went there just with one interview, and then I ended up interviewing 12 people, wow. including the, the founder of Arduino project. Uh, nice. I just saw him at the keynote and I talked and we just got that interview and it was like, I think 45 minute long interview. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was amazing, you know, to talk to all these open source leaders, just incredible. I mean, the beauty is that almost everybody is using open source. I was talking to Nitya Ruff from Comcast and the point was that nowadays you don't talk about who is using open source. You can say, who is not using it right. and why not? Yeah, right. kind exactly. Of, yeah. And of course, a lot of a lot of times when you're talking about who's not using open source, um, on that level, it's mostly enterprise, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and we just have to. I, I keep waiting for that trickle down from enterprise down to the to the end user, and and it's uh, slow. But and I, I think, think that also. Yeah. What's yeah. That? Please go ahead. I think that's one of the reasons why we have such a good topic today. Exactly. That's a good transition from there. The topic that we're and going what to is discuss. The topic? the topic is why are vendors not porting to Linux? Yeah. And it's been a hot topic for a very, very long time. How many of the of the 20 years that I have been using Linux, one of the most popular questions that I ever get asked is why is there not a Photoshop for Linux? <laughs> yeah, because Linux users don't need Photoshop. They're happy with GIMP, they, right? They, yes. And, you know, the thing is, and you, have, you and I have discussed this, we've said this a number of times, there are, there are tools in Linux that can suffice to a certain level. And once you start getting into it, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not de deride, deriding or derailing Linux at all because I, I use Linux. Look back there, my workstation is elementary OS. I have, Linux has been my primary desktop distribution for 20 years. So I say this with all due respect and love, but once you get above a certain level with your applications, things start to go off the rails. And when you hit that, all of a sudden you're facing a, you're on a precipice and that precipice is, do I continue struggling with this Linux application or do I adopt a different platform for that specific application, which I've talked about already a number of times, which I have done. Right. But we want to talk today about why vendors aren't porting to Linux. Now, this discussion came about from some, some comments from our last, our last discussion. And I, I think it's because there were so many comments with regards to this, I think it's an important topic. Right. Uh, only thing I would like to say there is like when you were kind of defending yourself, I have seen some 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 YouTube commenters. I don't want to name them, but uh, uh, they try to claim that they own the community. That kind of you know the same trend you see in America. You know, to take the country back. Uh, they say you know V Linux. No, there is no V. Uh, sorry, there is no I here. Uh, yeah. You don't own the community. You don't say that, hey, you know what, I'm the Linux users, you're not. It's like humans, and sometimes we criticize humans for all the you know, atrocious crimes that we commit either through, towards animals or as Americans, we criticize ourselves because a lot of things. That doesn't make us that we are not humans. So when we criticize something that is not right in the des uh, Linux desktop world, that doesn't mean we are saying something against them because the thing right. is, I am part of that community. I am actually, I think you and I have actually, because my career is started in 2005 when I completed my journalism. I start, my, my job was with Linux open source. So I have built my career around open source and Linux. And you are even, you know, you predate me. Uh, yeah. So we have actually contributed more yeah. to, to, to Linux, to the growth of Linux right. than any other people. Yeah. So nobody has a right to caution me or to question you. Right. When, you know, when we talk about it, we talk about fixing things, 
which is wrong or which is not that good at this moment. Right. So I just wanted to set that clear yeah. so that there's no us versus them. Yes, and this criticism comes from a place of respect with the hopes that developers would listen and we could help to improve the software. And, that, and that's been my case for, for decades a, mm -hmm. as, as a tech writer. I don't I don't criticize, and, and I, I don't go out of my way to criticize things. In fact, I go out of my way to praise Linux right. software. But when I do criticize something, I do it in such a way to say, this is what the software needs from my perspective. It's not to say that this is what the developers are doing wrong. Because I don't think they're doing anything wrong. No. At no. all. I think that there, there are a lot of times they run up against limitations. You have, you have uh, software standards that aren't being followed by the de facto standard software uh, application and or, or you you have um, hardware limitations and so we I've always been that way I've always criticized when I do have to criticize something it's always been in such a way that with the hopes that it would help the developers understand from a user's perspective because it's really easy to understand things from a developer's perspective but sometimes develop there's a, there's a disconnect between developers and users that I think that right. we need to bridge. I, I, and, yeah, I mean you're right. Yeah, so please go ahead. And and I, I think that there are a lot of reasons why large developers like Adobe and Microsoft aren't porting their software to Linux. And I, I can think of two, two very specific reasons that I think have a, a death grip. On those vendors, and and I'm gonna I want to uh, I'll go into my little analysis, my little story. And I'll let you I want to let you chime in here, but then I'll go into my little story. Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, I would like to just say two things about criticism. If you look at any of the uh, uh, whether you like historians or economists, you know they don't just write praise about economy. You know they they, yeah. they you know they also warn you what's wrong, what you should fix. That's how intellectuals work. You know right. intellectualism is not a marketing machine no. to praise you. That's number one. Number two is that uh, when you mention all these vendors, one thing uh, before we kind of dis uh, uh, discuss this is that. It really doesn't re matter whether you need it or not. Uh, as a platform, somebody may need it. So, so when we think about desktop, uh, whether it's Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, it should work. The primary goal is, as a platform, it should enable users to run whatever they want to run and developers to target their users. Yeah. Uh, the, the platform itself should not become the message that you know we only support and run open source that means you're not a platform anymore right. you are just another message that's that's one thing and uh, second thing is that you mentioned was that developers need feedback i think what happens is that you you're right that you know uh, it's not that developer doesn't don't want to develop that or don't want the thing is i think sometimes what happens certain communities or uh, because of the, the, the way our Linux communities work, there are echo chambers, you know, they, you live in the same echo chamber, and so you keep hearing the same thoughts, same opinions over and over again, so you're never exposed to the external world. Uh, okay, this is a stupid example, but I'm telling you, like for example, when I was open S uh, uh, SLS, I used three cameras to record my videos, so there are three cameras, setup. one is wide angle, one is focusing on me, one is focusing on the interview. Now you imagine, three timelines because you also do video editing and you know multiple like four tracks for audio now what i needed was like okay there are shots so they're like layered on top of each other so traditionally what i do is i cut those shots i you know i make a uh, timeline which is like invisible so i drag and drop those footage now on on, on adobe i was watching peter mckinnon and there is a setup called multicam so what you do is you click on the multicam button, drag all the clips there, and then it creates one big window which all the camera listed, and every camera gets a keyboard shortcut one, two, three, four, five. So yeah. you want to uh, uh, see the camera one, click on one, and it will be. So you can easily switch between camera. So the thing is, as a filmmaker, it saves me a lot of time. Yeah, it gives me much more control to to kind of easily create the the the, the experience and product that I want versus struggling with it. So sometimes users need those features. Yeah. I posted this message on Google Plus, and somebody said, "Hey, you know, snap, uh, you know, uh, oh, 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 shh, I'm, 
shot, whatever you call it, Cadian Live and a lot of, you know, because there are so many. Open show. I have not, only thing I have used is uh, Cadian Live because yeah. that was the most perfect. So I said, no, uh, the whole point of me sharing this is not to demean KDN Live or OpenShot, it's but to share my experience because those developers may have not experienced it because all the Linux users, they never tried Adobe, so they didn't know that there was a feature like that. Right. So it's very important to share your feedback. Right. And, and, and you know, and the community should look at it as positively to learn something from it. If you look at a GNOME desktop, they have borrowed almost all of their ideas from either iOS or macOS. You know, yeah. we are humans. So yeah, so I think that is that I just wanted that 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 thing to be clear right. before we kind of type out why vendors should support us. Right. When when you get to a certain level using a, a product, whether it be um, writing software or film mm -hmm. vi video editing software, when you get to a certain level and you're doing this professionally, and you're doing it repeatedly, you need software that's going to make it easy for you. It's going to make it efficient, make the, the workflow and the process efficient because you can't waste valuable time during your day to have to, to overcome hurdles. So, and that's one of the reasons why I had to, to give up using OpenShot because I was constantly facing crashes and the, the animated titles no longer worked properly. And, and I was at a point where I was doing, you know, three, four videos a day and I finally said, I can't work like this. I have to have a tool that I can depend upon and will make the creation of these, the, the, the editing of these videos, it will make it simple. Not, not easy, not necessarily easy, but it make it efficient because my time is valuable. And, and I think, and maybe that's, it could be an age thing, you know, because I'm, I'm 50 years old and, and my time is incredibly valuable to me. And, I need to be able to get as much done as possible during the day. And, and if that means that I have to use um, Final Cut Pro over OpenShot, then so be it. It's helping me get my job done. Now, I want to talk about, I want to tell a little story about this whole idea of, of vendors porting software to Linux. That just, can I interrupt you for just oh, yes, one yes, second? Sure, before sure, you're sure. Going to... Of course. Okay, when you mentioned this, you know, that I need to get a job done, uh, from what I'm assuming, you're creating some videos for yourself, but it, let's assume that you are also working for XYZ open source company where you want, they want you to create some videos for them, yeah. right? Yeah. And you are charging them by hours. Right. So to create the five minute video, you will end up working for six or seven hours and you'll charge them, you know, for seven hours to create the same video. Right. Whereas you're also wasting your time because, you know, and you know that you're not efficient and you're yeah. expensive. Whereas if you have the right tools, you can deliver the same product in one hour. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. so we have also considered that, you know, it has to, because if you don't have the right tools, it's not about convenience. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and, also and about making everything more cost effective and efficient. That makes me think of something, and I think that it will help people to understand on this level. If you look at the Linux, at the landscape of Linux applications, some of the best applications available are developer tools. Because developers know what we're talking about. They know they need to work efficiently. They know they need to work reliably. And so they have spent the time and effort to make sure that the tools that they use work perfectly. And those are the best tool ever. Yeah, that's, that's that, the thing. Linux IDE tools and Linux development tools are the best. And that is the reason why even, uh, even those, all those, when I go to open source conferences, people use macOS, but they are using all those open source tools because right. those are the best tools. Why? Right. Because users, actual users are, you know, directly involved in the process of creating of the tool or influencing that. Right. Well, and, and at, this, at, that, at that level, what happens is the developers also become the users. Yeah. So they get in their own little feedback loop and they can, they can make sure that their, their tools are ideal. What we need, what end users need, are developers that are also using those tools that they're creating on the same level, like, like the developers of OpenShot. We need, right. th those developers need to be, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not, the developers of OpenShot, they do a great job. And, and, oh, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll be straight up honest here. When people come to me and they say, I need, a, I need a, 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 um, a video editor that's really easy to use. And one of the first things I say is, are you using OpenShot. Mac or are you using 
PCS. If okay. you're using Mac, mm -hmm. you can use uh, um, iMovie. But mm -hmm. if you're not using Mac, then your best bet is OpenShot because OpenShot makes creating simple videos really simple because it's mm -hmm. all drag and drop and it's easy. But the problem is, is once they get beyond that idea of simple videos, then it becomes a little more challenging. Right. So that it brings me back to my little story. And this happened, I can't remember if it was 1999 or 2000. I was at my second Linux convention and I was, you know, I was at then. I was, you know, it was a long time ago. I was still wide-eyed, and it, it was it was an amazing event. And I was speaking. You know, it was the first time I ever met Miguel de Acasa. I, I, I met. It was the first time I met Linus Torvalds, and uh, I, I was, you know, talking to all these people that I had been writing about. And so I, there was one particular company that I had to talk to, and that company was Loki Games. And back then, Loki Games w were their job, their goal was to port popular Linux games or port popular Windows games to Linux. And they had ported Myth 2 and Hexen and Descent and Railroad Tycoon and a few other games to Linux. And I had played them and they did a masterful job of porting these games. I mean, it was, it was great. You could, you put the CD in, and you installed the game, and you played the game just like you were on Linux, just like you were on Windows. And um, so I, I had to interview the CEO of the company. I was so excited about this. So I'm talking to the CEO of the company, and and he he I I immediately knew something was wrong, and because he he was kind of a little down, and eventually he told me that it wasn't working. And I said, What what do you mean it's not working? These games play so perfectly, and 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 you've done a great job. And he said. No, that's not the problem. The problem is not my developers or the ability to port the games. The problem, people aren't buying them. The Linux community was demanding games. They wanted games to play. They wanted native ports of these games to play. And when they had them available, they would not pay the money for them. Because they had been used to getting all of their software free and they refused to pay for the software. So at this point, it was like the company trying to do this couldn't afford to do it because nobody would purchase the games. And and it was it was it was not a tragedy, but it it was it was sad that this company was doing a great job and they just couldn't continue because the catch twenty two was even though the the community wanted the games, they wanted them for free. But unfortunately, for a company, free doesn't keep the lights on. And 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 it's and it's one of the reasons why I'm you know I I, I talk about SoftMaker a lot, which is an Office suite. It's you know in comp kind of in competition with LibreOffice, but it's not open source. And and it's not free, but it runs on Linux and it runs really well on Linux. And in fact, it does a better job. Of, of working with Microsoft Office documents than does LibreOffice. In fact, if, if you open up a, a Microsoft Office document on SoftMaker versus LibreOffice, you're going to see that SoftMaker does a better job of, of rendering the pages than LibreOffice. And, but the thing is, is that the Linux community, first and foremost, complains that SoftMaker is not open source. And then second, it's not free. If you want the tools, if you want good tools, sometimes you might have to pay for them. And and when the, the community refuses to pay for them, oh, what would happen? What would happen if, if, if Ubuntu and Arch and Linux Mint and Elementary OS and all of these distributions all of a sudden started charging would would people still use them? I, I don't know. What do you think? I, I think you have touched a point that like really, really, I have been thinking about it a lot. And actually, I was planning to do uh, a video uh, called Linux is not free. Uh, and I think I should do that with you. <sighs> Nothing in life is free, to be honest. Nothing. Uh, 
I spend more on beer every month <laughs> than on, you know, uh, but uh, the fact is that I also buy software like Adobe, you know, I pay $50 per month for that. Yeah. I am subscribed to Google Music. I am paying $15 for that because I don't see ads on YouTube and I get access to music. I am subscribed to Apple Music. I am subscribed to Dropbox, uh, Google right. Drive. You know, I am even subscribed to Microsoft Office 365 because as you said, you know, we need tools sometimes. Uh, and uh, okay, <laughs> no offenses, but you know, when I started paying for this software, any idea, any guesses? What was the question? Uh, when did I start paying for the software? <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess uh, a couple years ago. No, why, what were the reasons? Oh, why, why were the reasons that you started paying for software? Because you needed tools that worked. No, it was after I bought Mac. Oh, <laughs> well, that's the, the same thing that happened to me. Uh, yeah, because before that, uh, uh, when I was pure, and this this is not, actually not old. We moved to U United States from Germany in 2013, and uh, I was a pure Linux user. And uh, my system was Dell was dying, and I needed a new system. And by that time, high DPI or Retina display became popular. So I went to, and my main system, the big desktop, was in a ship, you know, on a, on a ship that would come six months later, because we are like you know, PCS PCing from from uh, because my wife worked for the DoD, and. Uh, and so that machine was not going to be there and I needed a system. So I went to, to find a machine and uh, I looked around and there was no system by that time which had high DPI monitor. And I knew that my system is four or five years. Uh, Samsung, I talked to Samsung and they said it will be available in October and that was already Jul July. So I could not wait. So very heavy heartedly, I bought a Mac because the Mac was there. And I talked to Greg Hitch, you know, everybody knows Greg. And you know, he said, yeah, you can install uh, you know, Linux on it, but you know, key mapping may be a big challenge, but you can try. So I bought Mac and you won't believe that I, I ran Linux on it for one or two months. Yeah. Uh, but then battery life and everything, high DPI was not supported. So everything was, so I went back to Mac and, uh, uh, and that's, uh, that's when, you know, one thing that I, as I, I, I used to run my own sites and one thing I used to uh, use a lot was RSS you know, reader and on Linux you get RSS readers by dozen, you know, a dime. You know, there's so many RSS readers and IRC clients. On Mac, I could not find any. Yeah. Uh, so I bought my first application on desktop ever. Uh, that was the RSS, you know, kind of reader. After that, uh, once I got exposed to high DPI Retina, LibreOffice was not rendering. I met Italo at a open source conference, I showed that, you know, the, the LibreOffice, the rendering font rendering was yeah. pixelated because it was not detecting high DPI. And even he was using Mac OS and he, we compared. So then I bought Pages because Pages was not free back then. Mm -hmm. And after that, you know, it just kind of became, uh, because suddenly what happened was I was exposed to high quality software. Right. Before that, I was like using, you know, Gedit and everything uh, where I, I didn't care about how the tools look. Yeah. But after that, suddenly I was exposed. Wow, you know what? You really can have a very good experience when you're using these tools uh, and everything looks look nice. And when everything looks nice, you feel inspired. The thing is, okay, I don't want to say that, but this is AirPod, okay? But yeah. when you look at it, the design inspires you. Yeah. You know, so good design. That's why human yeah. civilization, if you go and look at Taj Mahal in Agra, okay, or yeah. any other historical, they're beautiful because they inspire. So human civilization is not about just putting, you know, four sticks and build something, you know, it should be beautiful, lovely. So I was exposed and then I realized that, you know what, you have to pay for it. You are not going to get free for free. Yeah. I did use Microsoft Office for a while, the crack version, but then uh, ethically I felt that, no, even if I don't support Microsoft, I'm going to pay for the software and sure. I bought it. Sure. Then I sure. bought Photoshop, and ever since I pay for everything. Yeah. Uh, even you know when I was using my, uh, I do a lot of 3D printing. You can see behind me, and I there's a free tool slicer. Oh wow, you got cat. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> <He's> hi. <meowing. laughs> uh, I got slicer, but it cannot do custom support. So I bought you know Simplify 3D, which is also available for Linux desktop, and it was $179. But I bought it. Yeah. Why? Because. I need to, so <laughs> the whole transition from not pay, no, I should not pay for software, it must be free. From a Linux world, it changed when I moved to Mac world. Because I think 
uh, it just changes the mental because you start valuing things that you know somebody is putting in effort and you start valuing quality over cost. Yeah, I agree. And what's you know what's interesting, my cat does not want to leave me. <laughs> That's fine. I can he's, get mine. Okay, come here. He's he's <laughs> he, oh. We have this weird relationship. He, he doesn't like to be away from me for very long. <laughs> um, you know, what's interesting, you bring up Mac, it, it, and, and that was the first time I paid for software as well. And okay. But what's interesting is there are tools on Mac that you find in the App Store that I don't want to pay for because mm -hmm. there are better options on Linux for free. Yes, yes. And, you know, like an FTP client. It's like, why do I need to pay for an FTP client when I, there's FileZilla? And, and there, there are other options, you know, or other, other offerings. But it, it, it's, it's interesting that on certain levels, you can't beat the Linux software. But it's not until you get into, into profesh, professional grade that that's where Linux starts to falter. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, I think that is an important factor to understand is that what Linux, Linux has taken over enterprise computing in the data center. Enterprises could not, could not function without Linux now. And, but at the same time, small businesses, Linux has, no, has yet to find any traction in small business. And then on the user level, Linux does great with certain applications. And it's, like I said, it's only when they get into professional grade that Linux just can't, can't handle, that they just can't stand up to things like Mac. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think the, the term is prosumer. You know, there's consumer and prosumer. Right. Linux does great with consumer. Linux does not do well with prosumer. And I think that that would be a great market for some Linux developers to start tar targeting is the prosumer market. And, and, right. and, and because, you know, the other, there's an, but the, there's another issue that Linux applications face with, with, with porting from, you know, these big companies. And that issue is, and I know we've talked about this before, but the, the fragmentation. I recently had a, an interaction with, and I, I'm talking about SoftMaker a lot, and I apologize, but um, the the SoftMaker listened to our last our last episode, and they reached out to me and they said, "Hey, we want to give you a couple of keys so you can test out the software," because they knew that I had had problems with LibreOffice opening up these manuscripts with hundreds of comments. So they said, "We want you to try this and open up your 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 manuscripts with these with this software and see if it works." So I said, great, let me try them. They gave me the key and I, I went to install the software on elementary OS and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't install. So I, I went back to the developer and I said, I can't get it to install. And they said, well, what, oh, what distribution are you using? And I said, I said, I'm using elementary OS. And they said, well, that's one of the ones we haven't tested it on. They said, it works great on Ubuntu. So I got on a virtual machine and I installed it on Ubuntu and installed like that. And now, what it turns out was it was a it was one font on my font collection that was causing elementary OS to not install. But what I had mm -hmm. to do was I had to zip up my entire font direct my you know the the home the home uh, dot fonts directory. I zipped that up, sent it off to SoftMaker. I said, find out which font it is, and they they emailed me back and said, remove this font and it'll install. Lo and behold. I removed that font and it installed just fine. But there, so, so I, I get the point is, is there are so many variables for developers to take into consideration when developing for Linux. And I think that that's a big reason. It's another big reason why we don't have Photoshop or Microsoft Office for Linux. We have users refusing to pay for software and we have too much fragmentation on the desktop. Just imagine, you mentioned SoftMaker, imagine when they have to target Windows, which I think it still has more than 90% market in you know, consumer space, mm -hmm. uh, they have to target just one platform, period. They, they yeah. have, and uh, just, you know, make no the mistake, these companies don't have hundreds and thousands of developers, they have like five or six or one or two developers, they work on that. Yeah. Uh, they, and it's done, Mac OS, done, Linux, 
how many distribution you want to right open suze red hat yeah fedora and, it, but, and it's not just to, distributions you know? it's it's distributions it's, it's it's desktop environments it's you know what 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 um, uh, development do you are using qt or or qt or or, or um not only that, yeah, not only framework, but also the, 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 the version of the same desktop. Yeah, yeah. All the way from Ubuntu 12 to Ubuntu 16 or 17 or 18. Yeah. You know, uh, so uh, uh, that is why, you know, the thing is, these are commercial companies, okay? Uh, you're, if you're a free and open, you know, you're a developer who are doing everything in your free time, that's fine, you know, but if you're a professional, you imagine, if you're working eight hours on something, eight, you get paid for, working on something for eight hours, you put that eight hours versus you get half an hour to work on something. You can imagine the quality of work you would get either way, you know? Yeah. That's well, pure, it's simple, you know, the more money, number one. Number two is that uh, it, it, the, the, the returns, you know, as you said, you know, that Linux users are not willing to pay. The returns for these companies is also low, less, you know. You are not getting that much return for the investment you're making and you have to make more investment because you need more developers to support and test all these, you know. And then, you know, a new version of Linux keep coming out every six months. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no incentive there. Yeah. And but I would like to change it. I would like to think that, you know, our, I, I wonder what would happen. Let's, let's just have mm -hmm. a hypothetical here. Okay. What if... Adobe came out and they said and they said we're going to port we're going to make a version of Photoshop for Linux but here's the tr here's the kicker two kickers it's not going to be free you're going to have to pay for it just like you have to pay for it on Windows or Mac and number two we're only going to port it to Ubuntu Linux the the, the long-term support Ubuntu Linux running GNOME that's it or that's all we can that's that's the all the, the 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 resources we can put into this development is for one distribution and one desktop. What would what would be the reaction? I think bad. Uh, first yeah, of I th all, I think I don't, so. Uh, first of all, uh, I will totally ignore all those people who say, "Don't I don't want to pay for it." If you don't want to pay for it, please go and do whatever you want to do. I don't want to do anything with you. Right. right. Uh, nothing is free in life. Would you work for free for me? Yeah. No, you won't. You would, would charge me, so why don't you want to pay for the software number? Exactly. Number two is that. Uh, number two is that. Uh, uh, I think this problem can be. Uh, Adobe doesn't have to stick to Ubuntu and <laughs> GNOME, uh, because uh, uh, the big problem here is 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 uh, of course there is one problem with Adobe, especially because it's a graphic suit, is that they you also need access to GPU and a lot of other hardware. Like for example, on my Mac OS, uh, if I don't enable CUDA. Yeah. The same 4K uh, footage will take 10 hours to render, and I cannot even actually play the 4K footage because it, uh, software acceleration with OpenGL is not enough. So I have to enable CUDA, fully optimized CUDA driver, so that I can do that. Same with Lightroom. Photoshop is not that sensitive, but if I'm doing a lot of effects, then you know it does help, you know. But it's yeah. not a big deal. But for videography, it's important. Sure. Uh, so so, but it it may be very, it will be very easy for for Adobe to work with Nvidia and and uh, AMD to push drivers for you know desktop Linux, you know or Linux desktop, whatever you call it. I always right. confuse it. But the big problem is how to how to distribute Adobe Suite on Linux. So I think instead of sticking to one distribution or uh, one desktop environment, they should just pick an app for like app image is there, Snap is there, and Flatpak is there. Yeah. Now the big problem is, should they put it all three? No, they should just put one, pick right. one, right. you know, platform out of these three. Right. And you know the Linux community should just line up behind that. Right. Discuss your pro and cons, everything. Right. If you look in Germany, there is a lot of things good on US. You know there are a lot of things that are better in Sweden and Canada and Britain. You know, but you are living in Germany. I'm living in the US. So we right. have to make compromises, right? right. So right. we cannot have right. triple citizenships and we move around from Canada, jump from Canada to eat food and then fly over to Germany to drink beer and then fly back to US. Yeah to sleep at night in a big bed. No, we make compromises. So just pick one format, right. make the compromises, yeah. and that's be done. Don't make compromises with GNOME or KDE or Ubuntu. Right. Every distribution, as long as, first of all, drivers should be there so that it can be used. And second is that it should support that you know app format, period. And then right. just imagine, 
Adobe has to look at Windows as one platform, Mac as one platform, and Linux, I don't want to use that finger, <laughs> and, and, and Linux as one platform. Yeah. Simple period, and suddenly yeah. the whole Linux world is at disposal of to Adobe developers. You know, everybody can use their suite. Right. And right. I mean, money is not even a big deal, you know. And then, just the way on the, Adobe offers two licenses, so I can use it on the same license on Mac and Windows at the same time. So I can right. have it on two machines. So they can add one more machine, so you can also run it on Linux. So right. you buy one subscription for Adobe Photoshop for nine dollar per month, and you run on app uh, Mac, Linux, and Windows. Right. No big deal. Right. And, and you're right. It. You are you are dead on with this. That Snap and Flatpak and App Image could be a game changer. Yes. Very well could be a game changer because those applications contain all of the dependencies they need to run these apps. And, right. and you know, we have a great, you know, they just released Firefox as a Snap image. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I remember a few, a few years ago when, when Snap uh, first was released, um, I, I was afraid that, you know, it was released, you know, all of this, everybody was so excited about the idea behind flat our snap and then all, all of a sudden it kind of died off and i was so afraid that we had this amazing opportunity in our hands and it would just die off because people weren't going to develop the snaps and you know and they've slowly been trickling in and it, it this could be the game changer that would allow companies like adobe and microsoft to develop snaps for Photoshop or, or Microsoft Office, and all of these great tools that, that could then be allowed to be used on Linux. Then the Linux community has to open up their wallets and pay for them. Mm -hmm. And there's one more advantage of using Snap versus, uh, you know, what is the biggest problem that I face on Linux? What? If a LibreOffice is released, I install the latest version immediately on Mac and Windows system. Immediately. The moment the press release hits, I, I install it. On Linux, I have to wait for weeks, depending on my distribution I'm using, because you know that will not be an official repository for one week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever. Or right. you use PPA on Ubuntu or you know third-party repository on other distribution. So your whole thing is like is stuck with so many different repositories and it's so complicated. With right. the snaps, what happens is, and it's, it's critical when there are like security updates because commercial applications, mm -hmm. because they are used so widely that you know they're they have a bigger you know attack surface, so more people target it. So they like Adobe, I get like updates like on weekly basis. You know, I, I'm paying a lot, and they are oh my god, they are like improving features. Like I was worried when they moved to license model that they you know now I'm stuck with a yearly. They won't update it, but now I'm getting much more frequent updates than I was getting when I was paying you know for version to version. Yeah. Uh, and so with the Snap, the thing is, the beauty is the moment they, 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 they update their software, the update is pushed to Snap, right. you install it immediately on your system. Done. Right. Period. No right. complication. So it makes life easier for the developer because they, it, the developer knows that you know, the, those updates will be running on user system. Users are also safe because they know that they don't have to do worry for about workaround or wait for one month to get right. those updates. Right. It uh, helps both parties. And I think that it is, I think that the distribution developers are beholden to start use, making use of snaps. And, and I, I think that if, if distributions start depending upon snaps, then I think there will be more impetus to, to make more snaps. And I, I think that that could just be a domino effect. And once snaps become um, snaps and flat pack and app image, once, once, uh, that type of tool becomes this de facto standard, then we might continue inching ever closer to having those third-party ports to Linux. But, but what has to happen first is, is that distributions need to show that tools like Snap can, in fact, become the standard. Right. Inst you know, right now you, you, you install Ubuntu and you open up the Ubuntu Software Center and then you have to, I, I believe I'm correct, then you have to enable Snap support in the, the, the GNOME software or whatever, the Ubuntu Software Center, right. whatever you call it. And then you have to, when you're looking for a piece of software to install, are you going to install the Snap or are you going to install the regular version? It can get kind of confusing. And, you know, and the thing is, is what needs to happen? I think what really needs to happen 
for this to truly trickle down all the way is that snaps need to become the de facto standard to the point where that is the only thing offered on the app store are the snap versions so such that all of the software on your distribution is installed via snaps and i right. think once I, that I, happens yeah. the door the doors will be flung wide open there are only two problems here first of all no offenses to uh, to the desktop community, but more distributions also think of themselves as gateways because they have so much power because they control right. what applications run on their system. Right. Right. I, I talked to a, a project manager of, of a very big uh, distribution. I don't want to name him, but so you know they, they lose this control, you know, because yeah. they have so much power and suddenly right. they, they are threatened by snaps. Right. And they're threatened by flat pack because they are giving, and they say so many things, oh, app developers doesn't know how to, yes, they do know, they have been developing apps for so many years, they know how it works, and it's better to distribute it to the apps than to keep, uh, to yours. So second is politics, uh, because, you know, snaps come from Canonical, so other, I don't want to name anybody, but other communities may not embrace it. And right. other project will come from other project canonical may not embrace it. So I think the whole problem is once again back to the square one where it's not at all about technic technological superiority. It's about petty politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they, we as a Linux community, we have to overcome this. Yes, yes. Every distribution needs to start thinking about striving toward universality. Right. No, I mean, that, I, I, I think that is key to this whole mess. And, you know, it, and you're, you're right, they, they need to stop, the fighting needs to stop. And people, the, the distribution developers need to come together and say, let's decide upon a standard and let's use it. Whether that standard is Snaps, Flatpak, or App Image, let's just decide on one and use it and, and start moving forward because then there will, the, the, uh, everything could then develop at a much quicker and more, more, reliable pace and and you know I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't be testing these different distributions and going oh wait a minute okay on on distribution x when i open up LibreOffice, it's still opening up version five but on this distribution it's opening up version six what's going on and you know and 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 i i think that i think that it would it would ease a lot of the confusion for new users to linux and, yes. and I think that's kind of important. I think that it is. I think that developers need to understand that that Linux is not going to grow until new users are fully and completely embraced. I, I think developers should sit down and think. Number one is, do you, what what is your ultimate ultimate goal? Yeah. Your ultimate goal is to to help users in using this platform. In getting things done, yeah, you're you're basically because you are working out altruism. You know, you're working in your free time, and your goal is you know to spread. So, so you should you should think about helping these users, helping users like us. I mean, we are like cringing, we're like begging. You know, please, please. You know, uh, so so instead of you know fighting over these kind of issues, instead of making it as a, a as a political issue instead of a technical issue, you can package technical issue as, you know, that, oh, it's not about technology, or this is the problem. But no, you have to make compromises. We always make compromises in life. So please just think about users. You know, I think we should empower users to be able to do what they want to do in our short lives. Yeah. To, to, so that we can achieve our dreams, we can write novels, we can make films, we can write poetry, we can create all the amazing things that human civilization, you know, we have been doing for years using these free and open source platforms yeah. and tools. The tools may or may not be open, but the, at least the platform is open. And the more we use the open platform, the, it will trickle down. Just the way as yeah. we were discussing in the beginning, that open source has become the de facto software development model. Why? Yeah. Because all the innovation is happening on top of Linux and Linux you know, in the enterprise world. Yeah. Uh, so same will trickle down, you know. So when Adobe sees that, that it really doesn't matter if, if the source code is closed or open, right. people are going to pay for it, number one. Second is that Adobe has expertise, like 
I mean, we all know, you know, nobody else, even if the whole story is out about Harry Potter, nobody else can write Harry Potter, nobody else can write Game of Thrones, no matter. So Adobe has all the engineers expertise in its team and nobody is going to beat you in your own game. Right. So when they find, they will open, because the code is no more important. Right. They can monetize through subscription model and people right. are willing to pay. So right. everybody will start you know, using open source as their development model all the way from Adobe to Microsoft because yeah. it's simple economy. You know, If yeah. people see that they can money, make money like this way, they will do it. Humans, yeah. we always tend to, to choose a simpler path. We don't go for complicated things and we evolve. We learn, we evolve, we change right. business model, we change lifestyles. So, so companies don't want to over... Yeah, imagine why would Adobe? I mean, I actually interviewed Adobe, you know, a few 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 weeks ago. I'm going to publish an interview, and they are doing a lot of open source in the cloud space. Uh, why? Because you know they know that you know they can cut cut a lot of costs uh, on R and D because you know a lot of development is happening in the open source world. So a lot of people from different you know companies will contribute to the code. So if Adobe sees you know that you know Adobe Photoshop code can be improved at a faster pace, they will do that. Yeah. But the thing is, you have to create that environment to welcome these companies. So don't yeah. be hostile towards them. Don't say, I don't want to pay. I'm willing right. to pay. If you cannot uh, yeah. afford to pay, please don't use computer, you know? No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, but, you know, and you that, know, that's things... another thing. If, if you can't afford to pay, then, then open source is great. But No, if you, if you can't afford to pay, then, oh, yeah, yeah, if you cannot buy a flight ticket, you don't fly. It's you don't fly. If you cannot yeah. buy beer, you don't drink beer. You don't drink beer. Yeah. You don't go, yeah, you know, if you don't, can't afford to read a book, you don't buy a book. Uh, somehow digitization has made it, uh, you can steal it. I don't pirate things. I used no. to, but I no, don't. I don't. Why? I pay. Because when I watch movies like, you know, Dunkirk, I ha as a filmmaker, I know how much effort is put in there. I, 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 I buy it from iTunes. I pay that money yeah. because somebody is putting in effort so i don't do free stuff right. yeah that, so, that's that's a, a big thing in in especially in in the uh well not especially but in the writing community you know and i and i, I kind of blame apple for this um with with uh itunes and and well and google play as well you know there's this there's this race to free that people only seem to want to be using apps that are free and they assume that uh, eventually bands and writers and, and such will be giving away their work for free. But the thing is, and, and you touched on this at one point, it's like, I don't ask you to do your job for free. I, you get paid to do your job and I get paid to do my job. And one of the ways that I get paid to do my job is when people purchase my books. And when people ask me, you know, are you going to give it away for free? I say, well, no, because I've, put a lot of work into this and I don't I don't expect you to give me your work for free so you can't expect me to give me you my work for free and you know open source is a different different beast but and 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 and, and like I said I have an amazing amount of respect for the open source community and open source developers and di Linux distributions and I wouldn't be where I am today without Linux to be quite honest and, yes. um, but at the same time, you know, if, if, like I said, if we want, if Linux wants to reach the prosumer level, Linux is going to have to kind of up its game to, to reach that. And, and, and Linux users are going to have to be willing to open up their wallets and support the companies that want to support them. Uh, I agree. There is only one little correction that I would like to add there is that Open source does not mean a free. Uh, no, free. You're right. Open right. source is open source is simply a develop software development model. It's not right. a business model. Business model exactly. is totally different. You're right. uh, you cannot get Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You can download yeah. one copy for free, but you cannot. So, op uh, so when you said I respect open source, uh, uh, I also respect. Open, but open source doesn't mean free of cost. Right, Some exactly. people have kind of associated with open source, you know, because. Uh, a lot of developers, since the reason is that they do it in their free time, they already have full-time jobs. So yeah. when they, most of the time, they create uh, uh, some package as a hobby. So they just share it with public, just the way you go to Flickr and a lot of people post their pictures for free, you know. That doesn't mean that taking picture means free of, pictures means free of cost. 
Right. You know, right. you go, you spend thousand dollar in go take pictures. So that doesn't mean, you know, that every photo photograph that is taken ever should be free of cost. Yeah. Same is with yeah. software. Yes, some people choose to make it for free. That's fine. They can do that. Yeah. But uh, so it has open source has nothing to to do with free of cost. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the whole point goes back to the same point. If you cannot afford it, you don't buy it. Yeah. You know, but, you know, uh, and, and some people tend to believe that, uh, uh, you know, the writing is, I, I was talking to uh, somebody uh, and he said, oh, writing, uh, there's no business model in writing, you know, writing should be free. Uh, really? Uh, so because I was talking about ad revenue from website or something and he was like, no, oh, why? The reason was that he himself worked as a researcher full time and he does his own writing, blogging for, you know, at the part time at night for two hours where he puts all the garbage from the internet and posts it on his site. You know, right. So for him it's fine because it's not his full-time job. But will you do that research for free? Right. Right? <laughs> and the right. second thing is that as a, as, a, as a creator of my work, I decide how I distribute my work. Right. right. I decide how I package my work. Right. Okay? You don't get to tell me how right. I distribute my work or how I package my work. Right. If you come to my restaurant, you have to get the menu the way I have prepared. Right. I set the table. Right. You can take the, you can buy the food, take it to your home, and then you can do whatever you <laughs> right. want. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, th this is another thing that sometimes I hear from people. They try to tell me how I should or what model I should. No, right. I get to decide. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that's so, I think that's part of part of the beauty the beauty of of where we are. And you know I I've, I've worked very hard for 20 years to get where I am now and yes uh, I, I get I get to call a lot of the shots now especially mm -hmm. with my my fiction work and in, in fact mm -hmm. you know I get to call all of the shots even even if right. my editor says you need to do X I can say no I'm gonna nope. do Y but yes. I usually <laughs> when my editor says do X I usually do X because mm -hmm. she's really good at what she does but at the same time I get to decide what the price of the product is, I get to decide where the product gets distributed, and you know, I, I get to decide what ta software I use to create the product. And right. you know, I, I use a combination of open source and closed source tools to get the job done. And you know, one one of the most important tools that I use, and this I'm being straight up honest here, one of the most important tools I do in writing of I use in writing of my fiction is Calibra, mm -hmm. and that is the tool that I use to convert. The, the final manuscript into an EPUB or Mobi format. I don't know what I would do without Calibra. And Calibra mm -hmm. is a free open source tool. And, right. and, and, it's, and it's absolutely fantastic. I would go as far as to say it's probably the best tool at doing what it does. Right. I don't think I could find a closed source tool that does a mm -hmm. better job than Calibra. You know what, the whole point is like I think and that is the beauty of this discussion. The whole point that, you know, not the whole point, the whole theme is with, between you and me is that right tool to get the job done. And in, 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 in I think, 80% of cases, that tool happens to be an open source tool. And we yeah. want that to become 90% or 99% exactly. or 100% by bringing all those commercial players in our Linux world uh, when I say our Linux world, I also use Mac and Windows, so I am yeah. not an elitist. You know, I use everything, whatever work, to bring in our Linux world so that we get access to, why should you be deprived of a great technology because of right. your platform? You, we, as right. humans, we should be able to, uh, you know, con use everything that is there. I mean, we should be able to consume everything that is created by any other human being. Right, right. Simple, right? Yeah. We should be using each other's work. Right. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so I think the bottom, bottom the, 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 I think in a nutshell, uh, I don't want to wrap it, you will be wrapping it because you always wrap it, but I think what, what the message uh, or the conclusion today is that we should embrace, uh, you know, these, you know, non-free software uh, products, uh, willing to pay for it, and try to create an environment within the Linux world where it's very easy for those developers to deliver their applications to users like us who are like begging that please, yeah bring yeah. your application to our yeah. tools because we love this platform and we love your tool, bring it here. Yeah. So now that's my take, what's yeah. your? I think ultimately it boils down to there, the, instead, of, instead of each camp 
shouting out at each other what it needs to become is a dialogue, a, a civil discussion between open source and closed door source developers, between Linux and Mac, between developers and users. We need civil, intelligent discussions that can open up these doors and allow the, the, the proprietary software to be able to function properly on Linux and, and that, that two-way street being that if the, if, the, if the developers are willing to take the time to make, to take those steps and get the software developed for Linux, that they know that the end users are going to be willing to pay for it. And, or if they're, you know, developing, you know, a light version and a full version, whatever they have to do. But, you know, they're, like you said, the, the ecosystems need to function together because it doesn't, I, I, love, I love the fact that I, I have all the tools I need. I would love it even more if the tools I need all functioned on Linux because I personally find Linux to be the most reliable platform I use. And part of that is it's just easy to work with. And if we were to have all of these tools in the toolkit that can function on this amazingly powerful and reliable and secure platform, imagine the work we could get done without having to shift from platform to platform. And, and I think that that is at the heart of the issue. You know, at the enterprise level, we have that. But at the end user level, we don't have that yet. And I think we can have it. And I think it just boils down to open minds and open discussion. Right. Just like open source. Right. And in the end, what is going to happen is that then you won't even have to worry about switching from one platform to other platform because you know that all platforms, you know, they have access to these tools and then you will actually pick the best platform which is there, which yeah. it's, nobody's guess would be Linux either way. Right. Right. So right. the thing is, uh, no matter how you look at it, it's a win-win situation. You are, you are kind of you know, encouraging and pushing companies like Adobe to open source their, all of their suite because they see the value of, you know, the value is somewhere else, not in the source code. You enable everybody to use all the tools that they need for their work in respect of the platform, which means more and more users will move to Linux. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, but there have some problems that have to be fixed and we have discussed about that too. So I think that's a win-win situation. Yeah, it is. That's an is. ideal word. Yeah. Now it's the, the point is that what is community going to do? So let's hope, you know, let's see what kind of comments we get for this video. Right. So, you know, just, you know, Feel free to share your thoughts. Just be exactly. nice. Let's have Jackson's. an open civil discussion about this topic. It's very simple. Right. Anyway, so, everybody, thank you so much for joining Swapnil and I for this intelligent discussion about the Linux platform. We'll be back again next week with another topic. We haven't yet decided what it is. If you have any suggestions that you would like us to talk to talk about, please. Fill in the comments and let us know what you want us to blather on about in this video series. But thank you very much for joining us because we wouldn't do this if it weren't for you. And remember, keep an open mind, keep an open discussion about open source.